Hi class, welcome to lesson 66. In this lesson, you will be able to identify nuclear reactions as being artificial or natural, compare nuclear reactions with chemical reactions, determine if a particle will undergo alpha, beta, positron, or gamma decay, and compare and contrast nuclear particles in terms of mass, charge, energy, and penetrating power. Make sure you have a Regents Chemistry Reference Table with you and you take notes as you follow along. Let's get started. So nuclear reactions involve radioactive isotopes. Let's remember what isotopes are. Isotopes are different versions of the same element. They have the same number of protons giving them the same identity, but they have a different amount of neutrons giving them different mass. Make sure that you brush up and recall where we write our mass and our atomic number in our isotope symbol. We do know that as the element gets larger and we try and add more and more protons into a nucleus, the nuclei become unstable. And once we get to atomic number 83 or higher, None of the isotopes are stable, meaning all of the isotopes are radioactive. But radioactive isotopes don't have to come from only large nuclei. Let's look at the example carbon-12 and carbon-14. Carbon-12 is the stable, not radioactive version of carbon. It has six protons and six neutrons, but carbon-14 has eight neutrons and six protons. It is radioactive and is used to carbon date or to find the age of once living things. So the first thing we need to look at are why do some nuclear reactions happen? Nuclear reactions happen when isotopes are unstable. Now most atoms isotopes are stable because they have an ideal proton to neutron ratio. We can see when the proton to neutron ratio is 1, it will be represented by the bold red line. And the pink shaded area shows the band of stability or the area where the most stable isotopes can be found. Generally, proton to neutron ratio of 1 is ideal. Let's take a minute to compare how nuclear reactions differ from chemical reactions. Nuclear reactions involve changes of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. When the nucleus undergoes changes, so will the element. So the element symbols on the reactant side of a nuclear equation are different than the element symbols on the product side of the equation. The rates of nuclear changes, also known as half-life, is not impacted by environmental changes such as changes in temperature or pressure. Recall that in traditional chemical reactions, the part that is changing is the valence electrons. Valence electrons are usually shared or transferred in bonds. The elements do not change in traditional chemical reactions. That's how we can balance chemical equations by looking at the symbols that have to be on both sides of the reaction arrow. Compared to nuclear reactions, the amount of energy used in a chemical reaction is quite small. Nuclear reactions are a thousand times to a million times more energetic than chemical reactions. And chemical reactions can be sped up or slowed down by changing environmental conditions, such as increasing temperature or increasing pressure to increase reaction rate. So there are two major types of nuclear changes, both called transmutation. In all transmutations, the identity of the elements 
that we begin with on the reactant side of the arrow will be different than the identity of the elements on the product side of the arrow. The only things that will be conserved are the mass and charge represented by the numbers. In natural transmutation, a nucleus begins by being unstable due to the proton to neutron ratio. That unstable nucleus will decompose into a more stable nucleus. So in natural transmutation, there's only ever one reactant. Artificial transmutation, there are always two or more reactants. You don't have to begin with an unstable nucleus. You just have to have two reactants. And again, in transmutation, the identity of the reactants and the identity of the products is always different in symbols. Using reference table O, you can identify the major decay symbols that occur during natural transmutation. Alpha particles represented by the Greek symbol alpha we talked about when we discussed Rutherford's experiment as he shot alpha particles at gold foil and they were deflected by the positive nucleus. So these alpha particles have a mass of positive 4 and a charge of positive 2. You can use either the alpha symbol or the helium nucleus symbol. Now these are nuclear symbols. They're only nucleus of the helium atom. They do not include the electrons. Beta particles are very similar to electrons. They have no mass and a negative one charge. The only difference is beta particles originate from the nucleus. Positrons are like positive electrons. They have no mass but a positive charge. And gamma rays are pure energy as they have no mass and no charge at all. Make sure you fill in this chart on your guided notes. You can use reference table O to help you. Because some of the nuclear particles are charged, they will be affected by magnetic fields. So an alpha particle, which is positive, will always be attracted to a negative field. And a beta particle, which is negative, will always be attracted to a positive field. But since a gamma ray is unaffected because it is no charge at all, the mass and charge of the particles impact their penetrating power. Alpha particles are very massive. They have a mass of four and a positive two charge. So these radioactive particles can be deflected with a sheet of paper. Beta particles have no mass, but they have a charge of minus one, which causes them to be attracted to positive charges and repelled by negative charges. Beta particles can penetrate a piece of paper, but they can be blocked by a sheet of wood. Gamma rays have absolutely no mass and no charge, so these are very powerful waves. These waves require several feet of concrete in order to be deflected. So today, Sydney and I are going to show you how to write some nuclear decay equations. Let's start by writing an alpha, de an alpha decay. To write alpha decay, we have to find a symbol. Yeah, we can write the alpha symbol. And we have to find a nucleide that undergoes alpha decay. So we're going to look here on our reference table. Can you find an alpha decay? Oh, I found one. TC. All right. So we're going to write down the symbol. And they give us the mass, so the upper number, for that symbol. And now we're going to write in the numbers for the alpha using our reference table here. Um, so okay. what? Okay, four and two. Okay. And then we're going to write a plus sign so we can figure out what this decays into. How do we figure out the top number? So you figure out the top number by making the arrow make equal 
the equal sign, making it 99 equals 4 plus 1, which would equal 95, making it the other top number for Perfect. this Perfect. But now we need the bottom number, but we, they didn't give us one, so we have to find it on the reference table. So let's find the bottom number for TC on the reference table. Here, I found it. Okay, what is it? 43. And now we can use math again to find the bottom number for the new nucleus. Ooh, goody, it's 41. And now how are we going to know what the symbol is? We're going to know what the symbol is by searching it with these numbers. It has to have a 95 and a 41. Well, it might not have a 95, but it definitely needs the 41. Let's find number 41. Okay. Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, here one is. N, B. All right, so let's write down that symbol next to these numbers. So we know this is a good alpha decay because we've not destroyed mass or charge. So the total numbers on the top are a true math sentence, and the total numbers on the bottom are a true math sentence. Now let us show you how to write beta decay. We can start with an arrow and the symbol for beta. The symbol for beta is the B with a minus sign. Okay, and we can use the reference table to find the top and bottom number for our beta symbol. Ooh, found it. Here we go. So, hmm, okay. The top one is zero and the bottom one is minus one. Good. So now we're going to go to our reference table N to find a nucleus that undergoes beta decay. Hmm, let me see. Oh, here it is. Is C. Okay, can you write that symbol before the arrow? So this is an unstable nucleus that becomes more stable by emitting a beta particle. And its top number is 14. Okay, so how are we going to find the bottom number for this unstable nucleus? We're going to find the bottom number for that one by... Hmm. Oh, I see one. C. Okay. So we can write their bottom number in. For, so let's write this bottom number in. Okay. Hmm. Six. Six minus one equals, oh yeah, seven. Okay, and how about the top number? 14. So what symbol's gonna, that gonna be? It's gonna be C. No, double check. Hmm. Oh. T C? Hmm. Oh, yeah. N. Good. All right, let's do one more. Let's do positron decay. Let's start with an arrow. And we know we're going to decay or produce a positron. So we're going to put the positron symbol here. Okay. Hmm. Okay. It's B plus. And since we're using this, can we put the top and bottom number? Okay. Hmm. Zero and plus one. Perfect. Now we're going to go to the reference table to find an element that undergoes positron decay. Can you find a symbol that undergoes positron as a B plus? B plus, hmm. Let me see, okay. Huh. Okay, C A. Okay, what's the top number from this table? Which CA is it? 37. Nice, so the mass is 37. 
Okay, how are we going to find the bottom number? So we're going to look it up in the reference table. Okay, can you find it? Hmm. Okay, the bottom one's 20. Okay, now let's do some math to figure out the... We'll write a plus sign, and then we'll figure out what the new numbers are for our new nucleus. Huh. I think that... Ooh, the 20 equals plus 1 is 19, mm -hmm. and this is still 37. Right, because the positron has no mass. What symbol will it be, though? Will the symbol change? The mass didn't change. What's the symbol going to be? Is it still going to be CA? I don't think so. What symbol is number 19? Oh, hmm. it's K. Right. So that's how you write nuclear decay equations. This concludes lesson number 66, the first lesson in nuclear chemistry. Make sure you've taken great notes. Bring your questions to class and I'll see you soon.